What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit, this is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is a new one! r slash tales from the customer. This story's called, had to threaten them with the ACCC in order to get a refund for services that weren't provided. Just over a week ago, I decided to order food off of one of those food delivery sites. All seemed well and good until the driver picked it up. Instead of coming straight to my house, he decided to take my food 20 kilometers north on the highway, before coming back to my place which is only 3 kilometers away from the restaurant. As a result, he got to my street about 20 minutes after the latest arrival time. When he got to roughly where my place is, he pulled up in a car park across the main road. I live on a service road that runs alongside the main road, but the service road is technically the same street. He messaged me saying, help me, I can't find it. Like, dude, I just watched you drive down the road and straight into the car park. How hard did you look? I explained in detail how to get to the entrance of the service road, what number to look for, and the property name. I live in a complex, and told him how to get to a car park he would be able to see my door from. Bearing in mind, this is contactless delivery, or some variation of that. Same concept. So I'm not about to walk out onto the street to meet him. I've asked for it to be left in front of my door so I can go out and get it once he's gone. Anyway, he makes his way onto the service road, drives up the service road, and straight out the other end. I can't find it. Okay, you need to go back down the other end of the service road and come back up. About halfway up the service road, there's a big brick wall. Pass that brick wall and turn up the next driveway. Okay, he's coming up the road again stops in the parking area at the end of the service road and again i can't find it at this point i'm here like sweetie i just told you how to find it i told you the number that's right there on the fence i told you the name that's on a big fat sign that you literally cannot miss what more do you want from me i told him one more time come back up the service road look for the brick wall after the brick wall, there is a driveway, and on the other side of that driveway is a big yellow wall. Drive up the driveway between the brick wall and the yellow wall, park here, walk straight across the driveway, and leave the food in the doorway. Please and thank you. Now he's calling me. Picked up the phone. I can't find it. You put in the address wrong. It's not here, etc. I tried to explain it again, and he hung up on me. He waited the necessary five minutes after calling, so he would get paid even though it was now 40 minutes late, and he had not made it anywhere near my doorstep, and then messaged me to say that he was going to take it back to the restaurant. I called the restaurant about 10 minutes later and asked them if they happened to deliver food, which they don't. Then the man that owns the shop said that the driver said I had cancelled the order. I set the story straight and apologized for the issue, and went about my complaint to the delivery company. Basically, my complaint said, I have screenshots of the conversation, he never made it to my door, did not attempt delivery as a result of never making it to my door, and he told the restaurant upon his return that I had cancelled the order. I have proof that he did not get to my address, let alone attempt delivery, and that the decision to cancel the order was his and his alone. I would like for the support team to please arrange another driver to deliver my order or a full refund. I am happy to provide records of the conversation I had with the driver if you do not have access to it. A week later, yesterday, they emailed me saying that because he had called and attempted to deliver the order, I could not get a refund. Again, I said I have proof he didn't attempt delivery. Another person emails me back saying, nope, not possible. So I basically turned around and said, look, I spent the last small amount of money in my account so that I could have food here to feed my family. I have a child here to feed. I don't. And I have been exposed to the virus. I honestly don't know if that was a lie, but let's just say it was. If he gets to lie to get my money, I should be able to lie to get it back. So I can't go out to get food. It was supposed to be a treat, and your delivery partner has done nothing but bring even more stress into a highly stressful situation. That evening, I gave your company an option. Deliver the food or issue a full refund. I have proof, I attached the images at the bottom of this email so they could not ignore it anymore, that the driver could not have possibly attempted delivery. To attempt delivery means to knock on my door at least once, and considering he couldn't find the driveway, he could not have possibly found my door. This is not negotiable. I paid your company to provide a service. The service was not provided, therefore I will be getting a refund, as the option to deliver the food and keep the money was ignored. 
If no refund is given, I will be disputing the charge via the bank, and I will be involving the ACCC. Thank you. What do you know? I have a full refund headed my way and a new e-receipt that says zero dollars at the bottom. Before anybody says it yes, I do understand that there are very few people in the support centers at this point in time. I understand that they have employees and bills to pay, but I have rent to pay, I need food to eat, and I currently barely get enough money as is to do those things. I had a little extra toward the end of the fortnight and decided to splurge a little. But as I have already said, I did not receive the service I paid for, and that means that I should not have to pay. I couldn't have said it better myself, given that you did it in like 1100 words. <laughs> but yes, that is ridiculous. Um, I use food delivery sites a lot because I'm lazy and I have no, I, I have no shame when it comes to spending money. <laughs> and what can I say? I like food. This story is called A Long, Painful, Ironic Story of Crappy-ish Customer Service. To preface this story, I am an iPhone nut. I love the iPhone, my personal opinion. I like the iOS and the look of it. If y'all like Androids, that's cool fam, no beef here, and have had five over the years. When the new iPhone 11 came out, I fell in love with it. I'm not the type to just outright buy a brand new iPhone. Expensive. But I had the iPhone 8 and hadn't upgraded for a couple of years. The new camera looked amazing and I use my phone a lot for my job. It seemed like a worthy investment to upgrade it, not just get one to have one. But up until the start of this story, I'd been trying to fight the urge to do it as I couldn't 100% justify it. So on December 28th last year, my mom and I went on a spontaneous shopping spree in a city about an hour from her house. This city is like two hours from the city that I live in, and I don't visit it very often, matters later. As we were shopping, we came across a phone store that was advertising the iPhone 11 at a $300 discount as part of Boxing Day sales. This was exciting as, if you're a fan of Apple, you'd know they hardly ever do discounts, let alone this much. The deal was to have a $60 monthly plan, unlimited everything which was a major upgrade from my prepaid plan, and pay off the phone monthly too. I was sold. This wasn't the same service provider I was currently with, but I had already been considering changing providers for a long time as I'd been having issues. I decided to go for it and went through the process of signing up to the new provider. Took about three hours, not excellent, but hey. Paid $49 for the deposit on an iPhone 11, 128 gigabytes. All up, I was set to pay $1,100 for the phone over 24 months, with each payment being about $105 for the plan and phone. All good for a month. Fast forward a month, my bill is $177.50. I call the customer service hotline and ask why it's so high. He tells me that I'm being billed for my plan a month in advance and that's why. But I can see that my phone payment is higher than we'd agreed on and my remaining balance on the phone was $1,350. This was obviously not right. So I let the agent from the billing team know and tell him I'm supposed to have a $300 discount. He tells me this is a sales issue due to it being a promotion and transfers me to sales. Sales answers, I explain again. I am told flatly that he doesn't know why I'm talking to him. This is a billing issue. He transfers me back to billing and I get a new guy. Explanation number three. After a bit, a lot, a back and forth, we figure out that that $300 promotion is not a provider-wide promo and is exclusive to the one store, so he doesn't know about it. He tells me that I need to go into the store that I bought from and get them to sort it out. Here's the issue. I'm now two hours away from that store with no plans to head back there. I ask if they can transfer me to the store. He says no, he doesn't have that ability. He googles the store, which I had already done, and called the number that came up which took me to customer service and gave me that number again. I hang up, I dial that number again. Someone new answers. A lady. Explanation 4. She tells me that they don't have direct lines into stores, but she can email them my info and get them in contact with me. Yay! Success! Someone from the store calls me and basically says that whoever signed me up didn't do it right and now they have to apply the discount to my bill manually. He tells me that they are going to credit my account with a balance of my phone as it appears on my bill, and then monthly I'd be billed for the correct amount. Sure enough, $1350 appears credited into my account. 
I am asked to pay the bill as is, but my next bill will take into account the money I've paid extra for the phone this month. Awesome. End of story? Heck no. Don't be silly. Fast forward to March. My second bill arrives. Same issue. I email my contact, much more streamlined, thank God, and he tells me, oops, they didn't fix the issue. They just gave me $1,350 credit. My issue with this was that the bill automatically paid itself from my credit that I was supposed to be paying off the phone, and now I didn't have the right amount to pay off the phone. He told me not to worry, he'd get it sorted. A week passes, nothing's changed. I email again, and finally prompt him to fix it. For my inconvenience, he credited me two monthly phone payments, which was really good of him. As of this month, all looks well with my bill, fingers crossed, so hopefully it's all sorted. Just find it hilariously ironic that I switched providers partially for the phone, but also because I'd been having so many issues with my previous provider. And then this happens. But all is well, I'm typing this on my iPhone 11 and it's a damn good time. Edit, I live in New Zealand, so all prices are New Zealand dollars. The iPhone I bought retails at 1,449 New Zealand dollars. I can back up those sentiments on, you know, at least getting a new phone because I recently upgraded to a Galaxy S20 5G after having the S9 for two years and before that I had the Galaxy S7 Edge for two years. And let me tell you, those phones were garbage. But this phone, this phone's snappy plus the 120 hertz display ain't bad on the eyes. But yeah, that sounds really ridiculous. At least they're accommodating you, uh, which is a lot better than, you know, some of these other people get. This story's called Pharmacy Tech Damages Store Electronics with Liquids. Due to the current situation, I figured I'd better go to Malwart to get my prescription early. After a whole battle of phone calls, which should have their own post here, as I finally got the insurance company to okay getting it four days early, I took the 40-minute drive to Malwart, strap on my mask, and go in. Amazingly, there's not a line at the counter, so I walk up, and this is where it gets stupid. The pharmacy tech gal, let's call her Ludmilla, is that a name? Lumbers over and says in her fake sweet voice, Can I help you? I give her my info and say that the insurance company said I'd need to have her call them and verify getting my prescription early while I stood there. It was the only way they'd allow it. Oh, okay, whatever, says Ludmilla. Ludmila, Ludmila, that's the name. So I give her my card and point out which number to dial. She quickly says, No, that's not it, it's this one down here. The fax line, and I said, No, it's up here, that one is the fax line. She looks at me like I'm a turd and a total personality change happens. Ludmila says, I know my job. This is the right number down here. Okay, I think. Whatever. You'll soon find out. Sure enough, she's waiting and waiting, and then I hear the lovely fax noise and she hangs up. Oh, that's the fax line. I'll try this other number, says Ludmila. Yeah, great idea, I say and just stare at her. Then I notice how she's dialing. She's searching for every number on the phone before she hits it. Like, search. One, then search. Wiggle hand indecisively around searching. Eight, then more searching and wiggling. Yay, finally finds it. Zero. And so on. Seriously, it's like this woman has never used a phone. She had to search for each number, and because she, yet again, used the wrong number instead of the one I kept pointing at, she had to dial again. More searching and wiggling and dialing. Ten minutes of this happening. It seemed like an hour. Finally, she gets through and I can hear them on the other line asking the name of the med. She's looking at her screen, up and down, back and forth, can't find it. So after a couple minutes and out of a polite sense of helping her, I say, it's a script name. Oops, uh-oh, I did the wrong thing. She snaps her head up at me and says in her uber snippy way, Quiet, I've got this handled. And then, mood change, sweetly says in the phone, Script name. They give her permission and she hangs up, looks at me and says, I said they approved it. Sort of uh, meanie. Then mood change again, she sweetly says with a smile, It'll take about 15 minutes. So I go to the already cleared out vitamin area to get some CoQ10. 
Cockyton. After that and a few more items, I come back and I'm behind the next person. They start to walk up and Ludmila rushes over from wherever she was hiding and makes a big show of saying, stop, go back and wait a minute, with their hands up like a cop or one of the Supremes, and the startled person backs up. Then Ludmila gets a giant container of disinfectant spray and a cloth and starts hosing down the entire area and wiping furiously. She even sprayed the customer keypad stand, all the keys, everything. Not one concern about electronics. This gal. Seriously, she totally drenched it. It was dripping with liquid. Then the next customer walks up, they go through their transaction, and when it's time to do the keypad routine, guess what? Extra points if you see this coming. It doesn't work! Oops, liquid's electronics, you know? So they have her do the transaction on the next one over, and then when it's my turn, Ludmila does the same thing. First, she stops me from walking up with her giant stop sign shaped hand, then she waddles back to get her liquid and hoses down that one and wipes furiously. And now it doesn't work now either. We had to go over to the third, last one, and finish up. Meanwhile, the other tech was beat red with anger at that point. I walk out of the area just shaking my head. Way to go, Ludmila, single-handedly screwing over all the electronics with liquids. I guess since she has major trouble with keypads, she's mad at all of them. Someone needs to get her a helper monkey or something, because I'm pretty sure they can dial phones. Or no, maybe that's in a couple years after the 5G radiations kicked in and, uh, you know, the monkeys become really smart and then they can dial our phones. Until in a couple months when it's uh, accelerated and their intelligence just grows beyond anything we can control and we get a rise of the planet of the apes. However, it's not apes because there are more domesticated monkeys than apes. And what does this mean, Zach? Well, that means more monkeys exposed to 5G. And then the apes, well, some of them will be smart. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.